stop other wholesalers from stealing your deals. Guys, this is Rick Ginn with Flip with Rick. And in this video, I'm gonna go over ways to protect yourself from those would-be wholesalers trying to steal your deals. Yes, it even happens to me. And eventually, if it hasn't happened to you yet, it is going to happen to you. Guys, before I dive into this topic, do me a favor, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button to receive more videos just like this from myself and Zach. Let's dive into it. How in the world do other wholesalers steal deals? It, it's, it's just flat out wrong, but it happens. So what you have to do is you can either hide yourself on a rock and pretend it doesn't happen, or you can just deal and prepare for it. So I choose option number two, and that's what I'm going to show you today. We have to first understand what are our weak points where these attacks happen. And I've clearly defined five different ways you are attacked from other wholesalers or investors trying to steal your coveted wholesale deal. So let's go through it. There's no particular order, but this is going to be your exposure area. So you, you have to understand them. Once you know them, you know how to tighten them up. So the number one place I see where the, the most theft occurs is going to be your internet post, any type of social media, and also your email list. This is basically going to be, in essence, your buyer's list. So say you got a property under contract and you put it out on the internet. Today's sophistication tools with people being able to find that address and matching up with pictures would blow you away. So I've had this happen to me where you, you know, where you block out the number on the house and you think you're protected and boom, a wholesaler shows up at that door offering them a different contract or maybe trying to misrepresent you and confusing them. Guys, putting these properties out on the internet is a dangerous game, okay? Also doing your email blast. What I call, you guys call it your buyer's list. I call it your liar's list because what happens is this is the number one way they do daisy chaining. If you guys don't know what do daisy chaining, look it up. It's just basically where somebody tries to get in the middle of you, your end buyer, and tries to make a couple dollars off of it. I appreciate a good hustle. You just ain't doing it on my properties. I work too hard to put in another middleman. So um, it's never going to happen on my side. And what you want to do is prevent that. We're going to go through each one of these. So number one is internet and email. And the next part of the video, I'm going to show you how to protect yourself. Number two, your assignment contract. Yes, your assignment contract exposes you. It's gonna expose your seller's information, a lot of pertinent details. The person that you're looking to work with sometimes won't sign the assignment agreement and they could go around your back. So number two is the assignment contract. Once again, I'm gonna show you how to cure that. Number three, when you actually go through the walkthrough on the property. Yes, when you bring your buyers through the property, you are at massive risk. And if you don't learn to protect yourself, this is a huge exposure point that other investors will take advantage of you. Number four is when your buyer's doing their underwriting. This is specifically when they're working with the title company, they're researching liens, code violation issues. This gives them a key to try to communicate with your sellers. I'm gonna show you how to work through on that one. And last but not least, your seller. Yes, I said that, your seller will put you at risk if you do not know how to educate them and make them conform to your agreement. Let's dive into it. So number one, we talked about um, the cash buyers list, also what we call the liars list. Here's the key. You, you guys, if you think you have a 5,000 buyers list and you think that's legit, I, I don't know if it makes you feel good, but I'm just telling you of those 5,000, probably about 4,900 are other wholesalers, daisy chainers, and co-wholesalers. You send that on that list, you, you're basically, I don't, you can write, and now a lot of you writing on the bottom, you cannot you know, post this without my permission. They don't care. They just, they're gonna post it, cut and paste it, and it's gonna wind up all over the internet. Also, when you do this, when your seller finds out about it and it's on the internet, they're usually gonna go like dark. They don't want all these people parading around their house with their permission, which is what you probably agreed on it, so that's where the real problem comes on. People start knocking on the windows, knocking on the doors, asking questions. And a lot of these other wholesalers will mark the property up 15, 20, 30,000. And if your seller gets wind of this, they think you're up to something, it creates a lot of distrust. It's a lot of problems. So here's what I need you to do. You guys need to vet 
your cash buyers list. You need to take your liars list and turn it into a cash buyers list. I am never impressed with the quantity of cash buyers. If you can go through and vet every one of them, I know that might sound painful, but it will protect you from this. It's simple as you can have a VA do it. Let's face it, I did it for years myself. I would just call up and every 30 days we go through our cash buyers list and we'd make sure they're still active, what they're looking for, and we'd put it in the CRM. And we just got rid of all the wholesalers, all the fakers, and we just got them out of our, our database. So if you do this trick alone, it will massively protect you from them going around working a deal. The, here's, a, here's a great tip, okay? So when you, after you vet your list, if you're gonna send out pictures of your property, use the Google Drive. I'm not a tech guy, but I, in Google Drive, they have an advanced settings tab where basically only that person can receive it and they cannot forward the email. This is gonna protect you against would-be wholesalers, co-wholesalers, and daisy chainers. Meaning when you send it to their email, they can't forward it onto their list. I don't know how Google Drive does it, but it actually works really well. A little bit of a pain in the butt, but use that tip to help protect your list so they can't just keep forwarding it. So, um, so vet your cash buyers, go through it at least every 30 days. Remember, quality over quantity. It's one of my biggest tips that I've been doing this 18 years. I don't care if you have 5,000. If you had five good cash buyers and you know they're legit, I'm more impressed with that. So remember, you're running a business. You're not running a popularity contest. Stop the crap from going on when you send out your emails and put stuff on social media and the internet. You're creating a lot of problems by not vetting your cash buyers. So number two, your assignment contract. Yes, and an assignment contract, when you enter into the agreement, it's a separate agreement, Part of the deal is you have to show your original contract. What's on your original contract? Your seller's name, sometimes their phone number, sometimes even their mailing address, if it's an absentee owner, landlord. You would be surprised how many times your would-be buyers will go around you and take that information and use it against you. I've seen them try to renegotiate my deals. I've seen them come up with just a poor excuse to contact the seller. What do we need to do to stop this? So first thing on your assignment contract, if you guys don't have an assignment contract here at Flip With Wick, we provide you with a free one. Once again, I'm not a lawyer. Please review it in your state to make sure it conforms with all laws. We actually share this exact verbiage to use. You have to communicate to your buyers via on the assignment contract that if he or she communicates in any shape or form, phone call, email, text, in-person visit, they automatically forfeit their non-refundable deposit immediately and their, their assignment contract is canceled. You need to let them know there's gonna be pain if they contact that seller directly. You have to guard your seller. It's so important. Put that verbiage in there, highlight it, have them initial it, download our assignment agreement, and this alone will prevent 98% of the BS when people try to go around you once they get the assignment agreement. It creates pain. And so the minimum deposit we take is $5,000. So if you want to call my seller, I'm going to charge you $5,000 to do it because now I got to go and explain this. So, and by the way, they're never nearly as kind as you guys are to your sellers. So you just want to prevent that. So number two on the assignment contract, you need to have the verbiage to protect them to let them know if any, if they contact the seller, there's going to be massive pain involved and clearly communicate it that will eliminate it. So number three, let's talk about the walkthrough. This is the part where you're bringing your cash buyers to the property to get the property sold. Now in a hot market, a lot of investors try to get cute and crash um, 20 or 30 buyers all at once. I don't recommend that. I think greed can get the best in you in that. And it's hard to control when you got that many people on a property, what's gonna go on. So the first thing you have to do is establish if your seller is going to be present. Ideally, a walkthrough works better when the seller's not there because you can easily control every aspect of the walkthrough. But a lot of times, let's face it, we are stuck with um, renters in place or a seller that just has nowhere else to go and it's their house, you can't make them leave, right? So you have to work around them. Here's what I suggest you do is, if you're gonna have a buyer or multiple buyers, please don't send 10, 20 people at the property at once. I just, unless the property is empty, it's a recipe for disaster. Your job is to be with the seller. Let me repeat, 
Your job is to stay right there with the seller. So if my seller is right here, the entire time I am focusing on that seller. So many of you guys focus on being like, you're not a realtor. We're not here to like show the highlights and the features of the property. You have any questions, let me know. You guys know what the ask price is. Um, they can give offers, they can negotiate, but you have to keep your seller away from the actual cash buyers. So many times the, the initial reaction of a buyer is to ask the seller questions direct. Let's face it, that seller knows the house better than anyone. Once they do that, you're going to lose control of it and it's gonna get out of control. So when you have your buyers here, just let them know they are not to talk to the seller, the seller's inside. If you decide to speak directly with the seller other than saying, how you doing, nice day, I will not consider your contract in any way, shape or form and let them know up front when you do that. If you can have multiple people there, it's even better. So if your job is to stay with the seller and maybe your partner or your significant other helps walk the buyers around the property, even better. Under no circumstances are you ever going to have a cash buyer contact or speak or engage with your seller directly. It, it opens up Pandora's box and I've seen more deals fall apart with just doing that. On the walkthrough, protect your seller at all costs. Guys, try to spread your buyers out, having 10 or 20 at one time. It's really hard to control that environment unless the house is vacant. And keep in mind, you're still responsible for the house. So you don't want them, it's hard to watch 20 people if they're all like pulling on the doors and like if you got a, a really beat up dilapidated house, you can't control if they damage it. So be respectful of people's houses. Don't let greed take the best of you. These people who think they're gonna have a, sell these open auction, where you can have open auction and take the highest bidder. Man, you, you're, you're gonna expose yourself to so many problems. You know, Are you acting as a realtor without a license at that point? There's so many issues at this point. One or two buyers is, is great. If you're gonna have multiple people there, you make sure you have multiple people and the person protects your seller. So that's the assignment. So we, we've gone through liars list, how to turn a cash buyers list. We've talked about the assignment contract, the verbiage, guys download it. We provide it here for free. It's crazy, I know it's free. Um, and then we're gonna manage your walkthroughs. Number four, the buyer's underwriting. This is simply the part where this is why we recommend you always use your own title company because you can control this piece. Your title company is a key person who communicates with the buyer and the seller. So your seller, and they have to gather information, you know, sensitive stuff, social security numbers, phone numbers, bank account stuff. You do not, under any circumstances, want your buyer trying to contact the seller. Now, why and how would that happen? If you decide or your cash buyer use their title company, I almost guarantee this is gonna to happen to you and they're going to not treat the seller nice and a lot of times it will cost you the deal. So always, always try to maintain control using your title company. Remember, you're doing assignment contracts. There's no additional cost if you're doing an assignment contract but having the title company represent protecting your seller is key. A lot of times the buyers wanna, hey, I need to call, um, they call the seller to verify a lien, let them know that they need to go through your title company or at worst you, they never contact your seller directly. You guys are noticing a theme in this, you have to keep your seller away from your cash buyers. The minute the two connect, that's when all the problems happen. They try to cut you out. They try to renegotiate. And number five, we talk about the seller being a risk. Hi, Rick, how can the seller be at risk? Oh, he, here's the problem, okay? Is sellers sometimes get tempted by other would-be investors, wholesalers. So if you entered into a contract with them and you signed it and a guy comes in like an hour later or two days later and offers 10 or $20,000 more, and the greed factor kicks in, a lot of times these would-be investors, I call them, because you don't have the scruples if you're trying to jump into a contract when the seller's already told you they entered a contract and they'll coach them to get out of your contract. This happens all the time. It's not even the seller's fault. The fault lies in you didn't explain it to your seller and clearly communicate the deal you have. So here's how you protect it. Once you have the agreement signed and, and notarized or however you do it in your state, clearly communicate to your seller, we have an agreement. We have a legal binding agreement. I left a bona fide deposit. I'm pulling title, like we're all in. You make sure you reconfirm their commitment. 
and just say, listen, I have time, energy, and money invested in this deal. I want to get your property bought so you can move on with your life. I need you to adhere to this contract. And a lot of times I go, what does all that mean? Go, listen, if anyone else approaches you, you let them know you're under a legally binding contract. Once they announce it, that would-be investor has some liability. Also, the seller has liability if they enter into multiple contracts, which happens all the time. So let them know you're only allowed to enter in the one contract. The contract is of record. It doesn't mean you record it. It just means you're, you're taking it to a title company and now you have an interest in the property and you are going to follow through. And if they go, well, what if I decide to take another offer? I go, well, I, we have a, a legal binding agreement and just reconfirm why they're selling you the property. And it's usually not an issue, but this will remove the greed temptation when they're offered a higher price, knowing that they're under a legal binding agreement. If you don't explain it to a seller, so many investors skip this part. And that's what happens when the property winds up. I've seen a property where I've had it under contract. It got out on the internet. It hit like a daisy chain wholesaler. He offered the property for like 10 grand more. And then their seller went in and offered my seller like seven grand more and tried to cut us out. Crazy stuff happens. The best way to protect yourself is true transparency with your seller and tell them we have a commitment. I'm going to honor my side. I need you to honor your side. This is a legal binding agreement that is pursuable in court if either side breaks it. If you do that, it will prevent a lot of problems in your life. So guys, let's review real quick um, the five areas where you get exposed for someone stealing your deals. Number one, internet, social media, and email list. Guys, turn your liars list into a buyer's list. Number two, your assignment contract. Guys, use our assignment contract, review it with your state, with, with a licensed um, attorney in your state, and put that verbiage in there. If the buyer goes around you, they automatically cancel the contract and they forfeit their deposit. Number three, your walkthrough. Ma maintain protection and control of your seller in the walkthrough. This is key. It will eliminate most of your problems on this. Number four, buyer's underwriting. Make sure you control your title company and if the buyer has any questions, they contact your title company. And if the title can't, company can't solve it, they contact you directly. Never contact your seller. And last but not least, number five, your sellers. Guys, communicate with your sellers. Let them know they've entered into a legally binding contract and they can't enter into another agreement. If you just announce it and let them know and reaffirm your commitment, you want their commitment back to you, this will eliminate the greed factor because if the seller signs multiple contracts, they're the one at the most risk at that point because you can't do that. Tell me what you think. Tell me, have you had your deal stolen? What stories do you have? I have a million of them. It, it's, it, guys, it's inevitable it happens. And all these five points I learned over 18 years, take this video and enact it within your wholesaling business plan and you can sleep better at night knowing your deals are not being stolen. Tell me your stories. I would love to hear it. Guys, if you want to hear more videos just like this from me and Zach, do me a favor, hit the subscribe button, hit that like button, and give me your feedback, guys. I really appreciate it, and I'll see you soon.